Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing some background noise. Sounds like a TV in the background or something. Yeah, so we'll get started in two minutes. Today we'll be talking about um, the accounting softwares that are out there. We'll just go through a demonstration and then we'll actually go through one specifically, uh, which is QuickBooks, which is the one that I usually recommend for business owners. Um, all right, and now a few housekeeping items before we get started. So if you're not speaking or if you're not contributing, we do ask that you mute yourself. Um, just to avoid, sometimes there's background noise, things can be distracting sometimes. Um, so we do ask that if you're not talking at the, at the moment, you mute yourself. There are two ways to ask a question. You can ask a question either through um, typing in the chat box um, or also basically just unmuting yourself and then asking your question directly. We will have a formal Q&A at the end. So this, this workshop um, usually lasts about an hour or so. Um, based on how much demonstration and everything we do, it might take a bit longer. Um, usually when I'm in a class, when we're live, we actually don't do a whole lot of demo. But today, since we're on a Zoom platform, we will be doing some demo. Um, but let me go ahead and start the recording now. And let me actually start my presentation. So James will be able to share this with you guys once we um, once we get done with it, and we are also live streaming this um, for those that are out there. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So this time I'm gonna actually share my entire screen because we will be doing a few things today. So um, hopefully you guys can see my screen. But today we'll be talking about um, really accounting for your money. Accounting for your money is the topic of today which is basically broken up into two sections. The first one is truly accounting, utilizing um, softwares to manage your business. And then the second one is ultimately basically finding funding. And as we know, there's been a lot of funding that was just released, about $310 billion that was just poured into um, the Small Business Fund by the SBA. So we'll be talking about that. We'll go to a site where you guys can actually apply for funding. So you will be able to take action immediately while um, on this webinar. Um, so this is a great time for you guys to be taking notes. If, you're, if you don't have a notepad, if you don't have something to write with, I, I highly encourage you guys to take notes because we will be covering a lot. And some of these things you need to act fast if you qualify. A few, a few of these things you might be able to wait on. Um, but some of these things you do need to act fast. And we do have quite a few people on today as well as our live stream. Um, so this will be action packed. This will be a lot. Let me actually get my timer. Since this will be so much stuff, I'm just gonna get my timer out here. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask any questions or anything. Once again, if you're not speaking, we do ask that you mute yourself. That way you're not distracting the audience. Um, yeah, just making sure that we're, we're getting the content and don't ever hesitate to reach out with any questions. So let me, yeah, go ahead, James. Exactly. <laughs> exactly.
appreciate it, James. Yes, sir. All right, so agenda for today, uh, we'll be going through personal and financial management software. So we will begin um, by talking about ways to get funding. So we'll actually do it kind of backwards a little bit. Um, but we'll talk about ways to get funding. We'll go through specific sites. And then we'll also talk about um, um, the different accounting softwares that are out there. So you have Wave, FreshBooks, as well as QuickBooks. QuickBooks is my personal favorite. Full disclosure, I am on the QuickBooks board. So I actually do have say in what happens with QuickBooks. Um, anytime you guys, pretty much anytime a client says, Hey, I wish I had this feature. I actually do consider it. And then I propose it to the QuickBooks on um, the rest of the council or the board. Um, so I do like, if you guys ever need anything with QuickBooks, if you have ideas, we're always open. We're very, very open. Um, this will be my last year on the council actually. Um, so as of next year, I won't be serving on the board anymore, but, um, yeah, just so you guys have some insight behind that. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each of the softwares that are out there. We'll do a demo of QuickBooks as well. And then we'll talk about um, how you get paid, right? How do you actually get paid as a business? We need to find ways to get paid, right? We got to make sure we're getting paid. And then throughout, you can ask any questions. Or if you want, you can leave your questions to the end where we'll have a formal Q&A, about 15 to 30 minutes. Um, you know, and to ask a question, you can unmute yourself or you can post in the chat box. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically when it comes to accounting um, or just money in general, you must be able to keep track of the money, right? If you can't keep track of the money, guess what? You don't have a business. If you don't have a business, you have a hobby. And as we learn with some of these applications, these programs, stimulus, we must be able to keep track of this stuff. Um, so we must be able to keep track of the money. We must be able to keep track of our finances. Because if we don't, we won't qualify for any of these programs. Any SBA loan or anything, you can forget about it. Because SBA is only for those who are prepared. Right? And by the way, you still have time to get prepared. You have until about this Friday or so to get prepared um, if you want SBA money right now. They're giving out loans. They're giving out SBA money. Um, PPP, EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan um, for EIDL, and then PPP Paycheck Protection Program. We'll talk about those specifically in a few. So remember, if you can't keep track of your, your business or your money, you don't have a business, you have what's called a hobby, right? So if you truly want to call yourself a business owner, an entrepreneur, somebody who takes himself seriously, you need to make sure you're keeping track of this. What I tell my clients, let's do this on a monthly basis. So we do this month to month, right? Um, and these are the various tools that we use to keep track of the money. So we'll start with Credit Karma, and then we'll also start with um, NAV. So NAV.com is the one for businesses. We'll go through a demonstration for that. Um, we'll talk about um, Wave. So Wave is another platform that we use. And then FreshBooks. FreshBooks is a platform we can use. And then QuickBooks. Now, really quickly, once again, if you guys aren't speaking, we do ask that you guys mute yourself. Um, because sometimes it can be very distracting um, when there's like background noise and things of that nature. So if you're not speaking, we do ask that you put yourself on mute and ask your questions either at the end or basically when we have a quick break point. Um, and then we do, we are having some folks joining. So if you see me pause for a second, it means I'm adding people. Um, so now let's go into Credit Karma. And right, so Credit Karma is a personal credit tool or software that allows us to keep track of our credit scores. So the site, full disclosure, it's creditkarma.com. It's very, very simple. Um, the thing that I love about Credit Karma is it allows you to see what you qualify for. So it allows you to physically see, okay, well, based off my credit score, or my credit report, I qualify for XYZ credit cards. Remember, this is only for personal credit. This is not business credit. We'll get into business credit in a second, we'll actually do a demo of a business credit site known as NAV, N-A-V-A dot, I'm sorry, N-A-V dot com. So NAV dot com, we'll go through that in a second. Uh, remember, if you guys are not taking notes, this is the time to be taking notes. 
you know, oftentimes I always hear questions of content that we go over. Um, the good thing is this is recorded, so you will get this as a replay. You will be able to replay this. But please, please, please make sure you're taking notes. Take detailed notes. Um, I've learned in life that in order to get ahead in life, you must take notes and any important thing that you hear. So that is my lesson. That is my one of my lessons of the day today is to make sure you're taking notes when we talk about this stuff. Um, thing about I like about Credit Karma, it's free. Right? It's a free software. It allows you to gain um, transparency of your credit score, so you actually do get to see your credit score. Um, and it helps you avoid applying for something you don't truly qualify for. So if you don't qualify for something, then basically Credit Karma allows you to see what it is that you don't qualify for. So it'll say, hey, not recommended, don't apply. That means you probably don't have good odds of qualifying for this card or this loan that you see on there. So one thing, my favorite thing about Credit Karma is it allows me to see what I do qualify for. What are some of the programs out there? If it says excellent or good, that means I have a good chance of getting approved. What that means is that if there's a hard inquiry, that means that there's a, it's a good hard inquiry because it's not a waste of an inquiry. Anytime somebody pours your credit, it tends to use what's called a hard pull or hard inquiry, which can have a negative impact on your personal credit score. Uh, or credit report, I should say. One thing to note is we don't usually focus on credit scores. A credit score doesn't mean anything, actually. Believe it or not, the score itself does not mean anything. It is the content of the report that means something because you can have over 50 or so credit scores. You can have the FICO, you know, 5.0. You can have the, um, there's so many credit scores out there. The most important thing you need to make sure is that your report is clean, your report is good, and your report is accurate. There, You'll be surprised, oh, most people, majority of people's credit reports are actually not accurate, believe it or not. So it is very important that we make sure that we check out our credit reports. Um, for me, I do it, I would say, at least twice a year, check your credit, see what's going on, especially if you're a business owner looking to get ahead. You really need to check your credit at least twice a year, me personally. I check it once a week, right? That's how I, I utilize credit a lot, a lot. In our real estate business, all we use is credit. About 75% of the funding that comes through our deals, at least, is through credit. So we must, we must, must, must keep track of the credit. Uh, with credit, you know, and it pretty much, did, um, you download it, you fill out a few basic information and then it pretty much takes you to your credit profile, your credit report. Now, a few things that I don't like about Credit Karma is that it's not always up to date, meaning that it takes time, it takes about seven days for them to refresh your credit credit score. And the score itself is actually not, I have come to the conclusion that Credit Karma does not have the most accurate credit score. And that's why I say focus on the report as opposed to the score itself. The report means a lot more than the score. Um, a few things to note is that your credit score can be composed, your personal credit can be composed of five factors. There's five things that control your personal credit. Number one, credit card utilization, which is simply the percentage that you are using your credit card. So if you have a $1,000 credit limit and you're using $300 of it, you have a 30% credit utilization. It's recommended to be below 30%. If you're below 30%, then you'll have a pretty decent credit score, at least in that category. It controls about 35% or so of your credit report. So it is big. So if you don't have a credit card, you need to go get one as soon as possible. My advice is get a credit card. You don't need one like that. You just need one to begin with. Get you a nice credit card. Um, it could be a Capital One, a Chase, Wherever it is, it could even be a secured card where you have to put some money on it. My advice, swipe it one time in the month. If you're just getting started, swipe it one time. And when I say one time, I mean one time. One time each month. Pay it off the moment that you swipe it. And basically do that for a few months. You'll start seeing your credit get boosted because it will report on-time payments on your credit report. And then it'll also establish a track record or history. The number one thing lenders care about is what's your track record. 
What's your history? What have you done? That's the number one thing creditors care about. Um, the second one is payment history. Payment history is the amount of on-time payments you have on your credit report. The ideal payment history to have is 100%. Even if you miss one payment, it can have a detrimental impact on your credit report. And I mean detrimental. I know somebody who missed a payment, one payment in their entire lives. They recently missed it. They tried to apply for a credit card and guess what? They got denied because they missed one payment, right? So you want to you want to be very careful. Um, and my advice is to have these things put on auto pay. So set your stuff on auto pay um, because auto pay automatically guarantees that the money is put out of your bank account and put towards that payment, um, that credit card. Now, one thing to note about the payment history is it tracks the number of on-time payments you've made by your monthly minimum monthly payment date. All right, there's two credit card dates to keep in mind. There's the minimum monthly payment date and then there's a statement date. There are two completely different dates. The statement date is usually three business days after the payment date, the minimum monthly payment date. As long as you've made your payment by that date, it will report as an on-time payment. However, if you want to maintain your utilization you also need to make sure that you pay by the statement date. You need to clear your balance by the statement date. It's very important because a lot of people get this mixed up. They think, oh, I just made my minimum payment, so I'm good. Um, you actually have to pay by the statement date if you want to clear it and get a zero balance. You have to pay by the statement date and not just the minimum monthly payment date. Um, so it's a very important to keep in mind. Um, payment history controls about 30% or so of your credit report. It is actually the number one thing that lenders look at. What is the history? Have you been paying your stuff on time? Now, an on-time payment is any payment that is made within 30 days of the due date. So if, you have, if you've paid within 30 days, so let's say the due date was on a 20, April 25th, and you've paid by May 25th, it will report as time. When it gets to May 26th, it reports as a late payment, meaning you're 31 to 60 days late on your payment. Bad look for creditors. How do you avoid this? Pay your bills on time. Set reminders on your phone. Set these auto pays. Right? Use your iPhone, um, an app called Bills. There's an app called Bills that helps keep track of your bills. But make sure you put things on auto pay. For me, all my bills, every single bill that I have on this planet is on auto pay. And it's also tracked on bill.com just in case, just in case the auto pay doesn't go through for whatever reason. Maybe the payment um, was stopped. I mean, wh whatever it is, make sure that you're keeping track of your bills. And keep in mind, when we say bills in this sense, of course, keep pay your bills, all your bills on time. But we're talking about bills from this sense. We're talking about actual credit. So we're talking about loans, student loans, credit cards. Um, car loans, mortgage, anything that's a loan, uh, something you owe to somebody, a liability, you have to make sure you pay those on time. Um, so that is something very, very, very important to keep in mind and that we need to make sure that we're paying our bills on time right? because 30% of our credit report actually relies upon it. Um, so that, that's the second factor. The third factor is essentially increase. Right. You have hard inquiries, then you have soft inquiries. A hard inquiry is if you apply for a credit card or a mortgage or something and they pulled your credit. Right? They reviewed your credit score. Um, that leads to what's called a hard inquiry. A hard inquiry does have a negative impact on your credit report. My advice with this is don't apply for too much credit at a certain point in time. Because if you do, then basically what happens is that your credit score will drop by about two to three percent or so, or two to three um, points, they should say. Um, so a hard inquiry is when you apply for credit. When you apply for something, a hard inquiry, they do, um, they are required to send back a credit report. So whoever pulls your credit is required to send you a credit report. So that's something very important to keep in mind. If they do not send you a credit report, then you can request one for free. Um, and one thing too, you are entitled to at least one free credit report each year. You know, you can, um, there are sites like Experian.com, for example, where you can get free credit report. Um, but hard inquiries are basically when somebody pulls your credit. Now, if you get a pre-approval, it does not lead to a hard inquiry. If you see the words pre-approval, 
it means a soft inquiry. A soft inquiry does not affect your credit score. So if you have a soft inquiry, it has zero impact on your credit report because they're the ones that are granting you the credit. They're basically asking you, hey, do you want this credit? As opposed to you applying for the credit. Uh, the next one is derogatory marks. This one is big too. Collections, judgments, liens. Please stay away from those. Medical bills. The number one collection on the planet right now in the U.S. are medical bills. Please pay your medical bills on time. Least you can do is settle with the medical um, company or the hospital and say, hey, you know, I got $1,000 for you. My bill was $5,000. Will you take it? Nine times out of 10, they actually will take that because it's better than them receiving nothing. Um, so negotiation is very important. Full disclosure, we do run a credit repair company. So we do assist with negotiations and things of that nature. But yeah, you probably heard, oh yeah, I, <laughs> let's just say that somebody told you, yeah, they had a $10,000 bill and they got to reduce down to $500. It's very possible. It's very, very possible. Right. I've, I've personally done it on a few. Um, I run a car rental business. So sometimes these car renters give us trouble. Sometimes we have to negotiate with insurance companies. We've done that. Right? We've had five thousand dollar bills drop down to five hundred dollars because it's the power of negotiation. It's the power of because the collection company, their number one job is to collect. That's all they that's all they're meant to do is to collect. As long as they collect, they'll have a good history with um, the payment provider. And they'll also have, they'll also receive a cut. They receive about 20% or so of the commission. So that's better than them reporting to the credit bureaus or them receiving nothing. So it's in their best interest to accept a deal. So if you ever get a call from a creditor, a debt collector, whoever it is, try to negotiate. Because if you don't negotiate, if you don't let, if you don't pick up the phone, you go to collections immediately. And the moment you land in collections, it is a bad look on your credit report. If you're applying for a mortgage, forget about it. Right? You might still get it, but it is very bad. Judgments, bankruptcies. These things stay on your credit report for about seven years or so. I always get clients that contact me. Should I file bankruptcy or should I just settle my debt? I tell them, settle your debt. Because bankruptcy, for one, it costs money. You got to go through an attorney for that. And then two... The negative impact on your credit report is just not worth it because if I'm a lender and I see a bankruptcy on your file, God forbid two of them, oh man, it's over with. I'm not even bothering looking at your credit profile. The moment I see, and we do this with tenants too, we had um, a tenant who had a bankruptcy on a report. We say, yeah, we can't do it. We just can't do it. Actually, they had two and an eviction. I'm like, yeah, bro, we just can't do it. Because that's a risky client. That's a risky um, tenant. We, we just don't want to deal with that. Um, and you are allowed to make decisions as a landlord on people's credit. That's one of your decision-making criteria. It's like applying to college based off your GPA. Right? We do the same thing. We screen tenants heavily. We screen tenants very, very heavily. Before we allow a tenant to enter into our premises, we screen them very, very heavily. Criminal record, credit check, employment history, evictions. Landlord references, all of that. We want to make sure that we're getting a good tenant because they're ultimately they're, they're a big part of the wealth building that we have going on. So we don't want to play around when it comes to this. Um, but the, yeah, the fourth one is derogatory marks. And then the fifth one is total accounts. Total accounts is composed of both your open accounts and your closed accounts. One of the worst things you can do on a planet is close a credit card. Um, because it removes your payment history basically. So, but with this, with total accounts, it includes both your open accounts and your, clo your closed accounts. Creditors or lenders like to see a nice mix of open and closed accounts. Um, so that's, yeah, and then other things that I don't like about Credit Karma, the tax component is just um, pretty much, I, I just don't, I'm not really a big proponent of it. Um, also, there's only two credit scores. You can see TransUnion and Equifax. There's no Experian. So that is one thing to note is there is no Experian on the credit report. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let me just pause really quick and see if we have any questions. It looks like there's a question from Annie. She said, I, I was always told to negotiate with the creditor and never a collection agency. 
Um, I mean, if you can with the creditor before it gets the collections, then yes, absolutely. Don't wait till it gets the collection. Don't wait. Don't be. Don't be reactive when something like that happens. Immediately settle with the with the creditor. To, um, you know, if it goes to collections, then that means it might be on your credit report already. So if it needs to go to collection for whatever reason, then yeah, you go ahead and settle with the collection agency because there is no talking to the lender at that point. They've already given up their rights um, to the collection agency. We got any questions on that before we move to um, the business credit side? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so if you have a late payment, um, the first thing you have to do, so the question was basically, for those that didn't hear, is if you have a late payment, maybe one or two, what should you do? Um, first thing is get it paid, right? So make sure that that bill is actually paid. Second thing is contact the lender or the creditor to see if they'll be willing to remove it off your credit report. Just It's a simple phone call to the credit department. Say, hey lender, I know I was late. This is what happened. Maybe and they they can you can you can write a plea and say okay, maybe I missed the payment because the auto pay was turned off. Uh times were hard, especially nowadays they're being very flexible with COVID-19 and all that. Um so that's the second. So remember the first thing is pay the bill, right? Because there's no negotiation if you haven't paid it until it gets to collections basically. Um or you could negotiate with the lender, but they, they usually don't like to hear anything until you've paid the bill. So pay the bill, that's the first. The second thing is contact the lender or the creditor and ask them to remove it. The third thing, if they don't wanna do that, then that's where you need to get into credit repair, where you either engage in a formal or a professional service like our firm, where we offer credit repair as a service, or you basically, if you know how to draft the letters, then you would have to draft a legal document to the credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, um, where you basically ask them, hey, or there's a letter, there's a template basically that we use, and you're just saying, hey, um, please remove this from my credit report, and they'll have 30 days or so to remove it, or 30 days to respond. If they don't respond within 30 days, they must remove it. Uh, most don't respond, by the way. So if they don't respond, they must remove it. If they do respond, then you have to go through more letters, more credit repair, and um, things of that nature. So hopefully that answers your question. No problem. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, great question. So the question is, I mentioned that the credit report is, or the credit score is not as important as the content on your credit report. The reason why is because you have a lot of credit scores, right? You can have up to 50, over 50 credit scores. You can have one for auto loans, home loans. You can have one for credit cards. You can have one for your getting insurance. So if somebody tells you, oh, hey, you have a 639 on a 250 to 950 scale that doesn't mean anything what 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 really means something is i've showed you your credit report and you have all on time payments your credit card utilization rate is 30 percent, or let's say 29 percent um you don't have too many loans out you know you don't have any collections so that to me is much more important than the score that's like grades basically like a gpa versus what was the content of what went on when you were actually in college. What was your resume looking like? Basically, that's the analogy that I like to use. The GPA doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's what were you doing while you were actually in college? Now, of course, to some employers it means something, to lenders it means something, but if your report is good, then your score is probably gonna be good as well too. 
And that's that's pretty much what I'm referring to. So hopefully that answered that question. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to send it by mail. And this is why we usually engage a professional credit repair company because they usually know the steps required to go through, the documents you even need to attach to that letter because it, it can be very special legal language in that letter. Um, these are actual attorneys that are drafting these letters. But if you wanna go ahead and attempt to do it on your own, you have to send it by mail. Yeah, usually it's always best to send something, especially something that's serious by certified mail for sure. Yeah, no problem. Hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so great question. The question was, is a hard inquiry worth a credit limit increase? And I would say yes, because the credit, remember the credit credit card utilization has a 35% impact on your credit report versus an inquiry, which maybe has 3%. You always gotta weigh the pros and the cons of any decision you make in life. The pros are 35%, the cons are 3%. I like the odds of 35%. Um, so I would go ahead and proceed with the credit limit increase as opposed to worrying about a credit inquiry. Not at all. I mean, ultimately we're all, you know, if we're applying for credit or if we're in a way, we're all grasping for money and that's the banks are cool with that. They're getting this money at 0% interest. So they don't really care who, like who they give the money to, as long as they're giving it to somebody who's credible. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think a bank looks at you differently if you're just asking them, hey, can you increase my limit a little bit versus somebody who applied for new credit or who doesn't even ask for anything at all. You know, when it comes to credit, it is truly those who are hungry are the ones who eat. Um, so if you're hungry, if you want more limit, then they'll definitely give you more limit. Yes, and if you request, yes, if you request an increase on your credit limit, it does lead to a hard inquiry, which does reduce your credit score, at least from an inquiry standpoint, but the increase will actually boost your credit score. So the boost will be much more than the reduction. So you have a net negative increase on your credit report, or I'm sorry, your credit score. All right, and then really quick, we do have a question it says, can you elaborate on a hard inquiry? Yeah, basically, when you apply for new credit, it leads to a hard inquiry. It's very well. The, the simplest way I could possibly put it is whenever you apply for new credit, credit card, it leads to a hard inquiry. When, if you're not applying, maybe if somebody's offering you something, then it leads to a soft inquiry, like a pre-approval in the mail. Um, so now I'd like to take the time just to do a quick demonstration. I know those who were doing a live stream can't really see it. Um, those on Zoom will be able to see it. Um, let me actually do this really quick. Okay. So yeah, we're going to do a screen share. Hopefully you guys can still see my screen. But this is Credit Karma. Essentially, Credit Karma is um, a very simple platform. Allows you to see your credit score. Basically, all you have to do is go to sign up for free in the top right corner. You sign up. It asks you for your information, such as name, social, all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, you pretty much, pretty much you sign up. Um, it's, it's very, very straightforward, very, very simple, nothing too crazy. 
Now let's go to nav, nav.com. So nav is a site, go ahead. Yeah, so if you see the word pre-approval, so you have to see the words pre-approval, that means it's a soft inquiry, meaning they won't, it won't affect your credit. Exactly. But if you see pre-qualified, that means they have not approved you yet. So the moment you apply, it leads to a hard inquiry. No problem. Yeah, and if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to pop it in the chat box um, or you can unmute. But let's go into the business credit side of things. Um, with business credit, we go on a site called NAV, NAV.com. Please don't let anybody get confused. And what site do we use to check our business credit? This is the site right here. It's called NAV.com, NAV.com. For those on the Zoom, I am doing a screen share right now of the actual site because there are no slides for this. Um, so NAV allows you to check your business credit card. I mean, I'm sorry, your business credit score. All right, remember, in order to truly have a business, we need to have an LLC, limited liability company, or an INC. So if you haven't took those steps yet, those are required in order to go on this website. This is only for those who don't run a hobby, basically. These are those who run an LLC or an INC. If you meet those requirements, you have to make sure you go to step two, you get a tax ID number, an EIN number with the IRS Internal Revenue Service. Um, full disclosure, we do run an entity formation company. So if you need help forming your LLC, INC, that is a service that we offer through the Badu Entity Formation um, Company. Um, and we'll help you get all of that, your, your L articles of organization or INC, your um, your tax ID number, and then also go ahead and get a business bank account. If you don't have a business bank account, your business actually doesn't really exist. If you're doing things through your personal PayPal and uh, you know Venmo, Cash App, and all that, that's not going to cut it. We need to make sure that we're doing things through our business accounts. Anytime we sign a contract, we need to make sure our business names are on it. So and so LLC, Badu Tax Services LLC, Badu Enterprises LLC. I don't sign a contract with my personal name unless my company name is on there. And maybe next to my name is the title. So Jeff Badu, comma, owner or practitioner, CEO, whatever you want to title yourself. Um, so step one is we get our business entity set up. Step two is we get our tax ID number. And then step three, we get our business bank account. And then we'll talk about it later. We get our QuickBooks account set up so that we can keep track of our books and records. So this site here allows us to check our business credit profile, our, our business credit report. When it comes to business credit, the only thing that they really care about is payment history. They don't really care about anything else. As long as you're paying your bills on time as a business owner or as a business credit um, to your creditors, that's all they care about. It can go anywhere from A all the way through F. All right, so you need to try to strive for an A rated credit profile. Um, in order to get business credit, here is very important. I'll share a personal story. In order to get good um, personal or business credit, you have to have personal credit. Um, so let's just say, I'll give you guys an example. The Badu Investments Company was formed and um, it was formed around April of 2017. So right after tax season or so. So in April of 2017, we decided we wanted to get into real estate, all right? We, we, we saw some buildings. And I was very fortunate enough. God showed me something. He showed me something in Champaign. I went to the U of I in Champaign, Urbana-Champaign, and he showed me four townhomes that I saw on a site called LoopNet. LoopNet is where we typically find um, commercial or multifamily real estate properties. He showed me four townhomes, each costing $75,000. So in total, there were 300,000. Um, I was very well qualified to get a loan, right? I reached out to my lending partner, uh, which was Vizio at the time, which I still use Vizio to this day. Those are for real estate loans. And I do have, our firm does have a partnership with Vizio still. 
But Vizio said, okay, we'll give you financing at 75%. This is how we do most of our deals. We do financing at 75%, so they'll give us 75%, no questions asked. As long as the building appraises right, um, everything is good. The legal, the legalities and everything is good. The cash flow look, looks nice. So as long as everything is nice, we'll get 75% all day, every day. They'll give us 75% of the purchase price. So our job was to come up with the down payment, 75, I'm sorry, 25%. So at the time, my personal credit actually took a hit because I was running a car rental business. I was running a car rental business where we had about 10 cars in the car rental business. So my credit was already exhausted by a lot of cars, right? My personal credit. I didn't learn business credit early enough to get the cars under a business credit profile as opposed to a personal credit. You know, you live and learn. Learn from the mistakes of others. That's how I've learned from most of my mistakes is learn from others. But you guys can learn from me. I made the mistake of putting these cars on my personal credit when I could have done it on my business credit. Big mistake. So guess what? Now I could not get the 25% um, down payment. So what I had to do is I had to find the money. I had to find the money. How did we find this money? We got business credit cards. And my credit score at the time was not qualified to get business credit cards. So guess what I did? I found a partner, a family member, won't disclose who they are, um, since we're live streaming and everything. But I found a, a, a friend or a family member and said, hey, family member, I'll give you 10% equity in exchange for your credit. This is somebody that truly cares about me. This is truly somebody that wants to see me grow. And they said, okay, yeah, 10% equity. Sure, why not? So then what we did is we started applying. So at the time, they had about a 720 personal credit. Um, to get good business credit, you need at least a six. Not a 650, good 650. Um, if you have a 650 personal credit score, then you're good. You can get some business credit. If you want the real business credit, you need a 700 or above. Um, but this person had a 720 and they said, yeah, you know, we'll go through the process. Tell me what I got to do. I sent them the legal documents, the operating agreement and all that good stuff they signed. And they were, um, they were vested or they, they received 10% equity in the company. And of course, it's a close family member, somebody I care about. I'm, I'm, I don't mind getting into business with this person. So they, in exchange for 10% equity, I traded them for their credit score. We even got more cars under their name, right? Using their business profile. So they actually, they're reaping a lot of benefits. They're still reaping benefits to this day of the Badu Investments Company, which I'm perfectly fine with. Hey, they helped me get started. So I'm perfectly fine sharing the equity with who gets me started. So what we did is we applied for business credit cards. The first one we applied for was the Chase Inc. So if you guys aren't writing this down, write down the Chase Inc. business credit card, the best business credit card on the planet, especially if you're getting started. The Chase Inc. card has a very high limit. We got approved for about $15,000 or so, give or take. Um, nowadays, you can get approved for about twenty-five dollars or so to $30,000. And this was like day one of the business being formed. So the day the business got formed, we got business credit the next day. So the myth about, oh, you need to be in business for a year and all two years and all tax returns and all that. When it comes to a business credit card, they use your business profile. I'm sorry, your personal profile. Um, you, you're personally guaranteeing the business credit card in case something bad happens. But you can get a business credit card even if you're one day into the business. So we got about $15,000 through Chase, um, Chase Inc. And it's 0% interest for about 12 months, which is beautiful. And it comes with free rewards, about $500 if you spend at least $3,000 in the first month, which of course we blew past that one. And they'll give you a balance transfer check in case you want to take out cash. So you're probably wondering, how do you get cash from a credit card to use as a down payment? Is you request a balance transfer check and use the money to cover the down payment. So we secured 15,000 on that end. Then we went to PNC Bank. PNC, they call it the cash card, the, the business cash card. That one, they gave us 6,000. We were like, cool, you know, it's not as much as we wanted or it, it's not enough, but hey, 6,000, 0% interest for six months. We were like, we'll take it. 
All right, so I think we got somebody who's not muted on here. So yeah, by the way, if you guys aren't talking, we do ask you mute yourself. That way there's no distractions or anything like that. Um, so please, if, if you're joining or if you're on and you're not muted, please go ahead and mute yourself. You will be able to unmute yourself and ask any questions. Um, so ultimately, yeah, we got 6,000 from the PNC. And then we got, let's see what else. We got some other cards. Ultimately, um, for example, the Capital One card, which I don't recommend. Capital One is the only business credit card that reports to your personal credit score. Um, it is very bad, actually, because meaning that if, let's say that with these cards, yeah, we're maxing them out. <laughs> There's no way we're just leaving um, the, the limits or anything on there because we're trying to accomplish something. We're buying a property. So we're getting, we got the Capital One card. That was about 5,000 or so. And unfortunately with Capital One, they're the only credit card company that reports to your personal credit profile. Meaning whatever you've used, they count it towards your personal utilization. The Chase Inc., no such thing. The cash, the, the, the business cash on um, PNC, no such thing. Amex, no such thing. So PNC was the only, um, I'm sorry, Capital One was the only card where it actually reported to the personal. So I don't usually recommend getting that card unless it's a last resort. Unless you really, really, really need the cash and you have a great investment out there. So long story short, we were only able to secure $30,000. We unfortunately did not get the building because it wasn't enough. However, we did go down the street to Gary, Indiana, and we participated in a tax sale auction the following year, and we landed about 10 properties or so using those credit cards. Um, so it is possible to make money using other people's money, especially in real estate. All right, we went to Gary, Indiana, put bids on 10 properties, we only ended up with about five of them, but those 10, the way Gary Indiana tax sale works is um, even if a property owner quote unquote redeems the property taxes, they have to pay you 10% interest. And there's a six month, what they call redemption period, meaning they have six months to pay you back. If they don't pay you, you can file um, a lien against the property or a deed. You can officially file for the deed. And once you get the deed, you take ownership of the property. So these are folks who owe back taxes on their property because the state needs money or the county needs money um, to fund schools, roads, pensions, all that good stuff. Um, so a few takeaways from what I just talked about. First of all, nav.com, you need to sign up, it's free. And that's how you get your business profile. Now I do recommend you get a Duns and Bradstreet number. So you go to DMV, um, Duns and Bradstreet, all right? So let me actually go on there right now. So Duns and Bradstreet. Um, for those that are paying attention to the um, to the Zoom. So yeah, Duns and Bradstreet allows you to go on there and basically get a free Duns number. Um, so you can go on here, let's see. Yep, you go to Duns number, and then you pretty much apply for a Duns number. Every business we have has its own Duns number, D-U-N um, Duns number. So it is recommended to get one, just so it's basically like a social security number in a way, or a business credit profile. It's another way for creditors to report to your business credit. So get a DMV number, you go on the Duns and Bradstreet page, and you pretty much apply for one. And they ask you, hey, what's the reason? I have a US-based business. And then you start punching in the information, and then you take it to the next prompt. Um, they, they have made it a bit simpler when it comes to DMV. But nav.com allows you to view your business credit profile. It shows you your Experian credit score. Um, and it also tells you what you qualify for. For example, business loans, business credit cards. If it shows as excellent, then that means you have a good chance of um, being qualified for the credit card. And remember the, the top ones that we, we look at are the Chase Inc. business credit card. That's the number one. Number two, I would put Amex, the American Express um, Platinum card. It's an unlimited card, meaning there's no preset limit. Um, love that card to death. Free global entry. Um, I mean, there's so many benefits and perks. You know, it's like six times the travel or five times the travel. Um, so I would put Chase Inc. as number one. The Amex Platinum is number two. The PNC, which you will not find on NAV, so that one you have to go to pnc.com and apply for the PNC cash card. Um, PNC has a very good credit, um, credit card program where you can get 
um, a nice decent limit and then also Capital One is also one so you can get four four of these credit cards at least um, there are other ones like US Bank and Bank of America but those they'll ask you for information that you won't have available so those are the four it is Chase um, American Express PNC and then we also have Capital One those are the four that you can at least get you can get your hands on about 50 grand so if you guys haven't gotten anything out of today, I just gave you about thirty to fifty thousand dollars that you can start your business with um, moving forward. You know, so the qualifications. Remember, you have to have a good personal credit profile, at least a six fifty or above. No collections, no none of that. If you don't find somebody with good credit, so it's either use your own credit or use other people's credit. For me, it cost me ten percent equity in my company. But hey, whoever has helped me get started, I don't mind giving them a fair share of what they deserve. Because without them, I wouldn't be where I am today anyway. So you have to be very, very humbled about that. Even though you're giving up equity, especially to somebody you care about, there's nothing wrong with that. Worst case, you can do a buyout agreement at some point where you buy them out. Where you say, hey, here's your, here's your $50,000 that you allow me to get. Here's 10%, 50% interest, whatever you want to give them and say, um, I'm looking to take my business to the next level and I would like to exchange back my equity that I gave you um, in exchange for this money. And if it's a close family member who you've talked to, you've vetted, they should be very well understanding. Um, you know, my equity partner, we actually still keep in the company because they actually have real estate experience as well. So they teach me a thing or two about real estate. So that's what you guys need to know about business credit now. There are two programs I did mention that will have a bonus. There are two, I'm sorry, let me go to this. There are two things that have come out of the COVID-19. One is the EIDL, so Economic Injury um, Disaster Loan. And that one you can get on the sba.gov website. However, unfortunately, Unfortunately, you cannot apply for this loan right now. They are not taking any new applications because they basically ran out of EIDL money. I just did a webinar earlier today and I said that they would run out by Friday. Well, unfortunately, SBA.gov on EIDL, so let's see here. So the way we do it is we go to SBA.gov and then we click on learn more. Um, and I'll show you how you guys why you guys cannot apply for the EIDL right now. Um, so let me just go in here. Let's see what we go to. Yeah, usually when I go on a new site, I just like to scroll around and see what's going on. Um, so let, here we go. Coronavirus funding options on the page. And then let's see. Click here to learn more about available SBA loans. And then I scroll through. And you know, here we go. There's EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. It's a $10,000 advance. And then let's see, here we go. SBA is unable to accept new applications at this time for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL, COVID-19 Related Assistance Program, which includes the $10,000 EIDL advances based on available appropriations funding. Applicants who have already submitted their applications will continue to be processed on a first come, first in line, first to eat, first who's hungry, first served basis. So this loan came out, I mean, it came out at the beginning of the year, pretty much, like early March. So, or actually end of February, I believe. So those who were hungry and those who knew that they could get this loan were the people who can apply for this. So right now you cannot apply for EIDL. It is done. It's gone. It may never come back again. It may come back, who knows, but it may never come back. However... You guys are lucky in that there's a PPP, which I anticipate this money will be gone by this Friday. There's a Paycheck Protection Program PPP, and the site that we use, or my firm uses, is Lendio, L-E-N-D-I-O.com. Once again, it's Lendio. I'm on the screen right now on Zoom. Um, Lendio allows you to apply. In order to qualify, you have to have either a corporation or a, um, an S corporate. Like If you have a, a corporation, you have to have payroll. So you have to have run a W-2 payroll. And guess what? Here, here's where things can bite you in the foot a little bit. As a corporation that's making a profit, you must run payroll each year. It's called reasonable compensation. 
It's a legal requirement by the IRS. So for those that don't run payroll and have a profit, you don't qualify for this loan. They said, hey, if you don't, if you don't want to comply or if you don't want to do things the right way, we just won't make you eligible for this loan. So if you don't run payroll and you have a corporation and your business was active as of 2019, you don't qualify for this loan. You would have had to have W-2 payroll that was ran through a W-2 payroll provider like the one we use called ADP. Um, you don't qualify. And if you're self-employed, you love taking losses, you don't qualify for this program either because it's only for those self-employed that have a profit. And here's another thing. You must have a 2019 tax return filed in order to qualify for this loan. Both, I mean, actually now we're just dealing with PPP, Paycheck Protection Program. So you must have a 2019 tax return filed. If you're self-employed or Schedule C or solopreneur, you have to have a, a Schedule C on your 2019 tax return that shows a profit. If there's a loss, you don't qualify. Um, and if you have a corporation, like an S corporation or um, a C corporation, then you have to have payroll, W-2 payroll. So to apply for it, you go to Lendio.com, right there on the homepage. You can't miss it. It says round two of PPP. They ran out of funds the first time. And I guarantee you they will be running out by this Friday. It says round two of PPP. They even tell you round two of PPP is here, but not for long. Submit your application now. Not tomorrow, not next Tuesday, when you feel like it, but right now. The moment we get off this call, you guys, if you want this money, you need to apply for it like right after this, um, this workshop. So you just click get started and it basically takes you to your borrower portal. You punch in your information, first name, last name, business name, mobile number, password, um, and it, it's a very simple application. You just need your, your tax return. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, so great question. And I'm glad you point that out. Um, it looks like on our on our live stream, we might be ending pretty soon, but I'll replay it back. Great question. And this is where the... Um, <laughs> This is where the guy in me that likes to take advantage of programs comes out and says, in America, we live in a game or we live in a country of systems and we live in a country where we call it the home of, home of the free, land of the brave, right? Meaning if you know how to play the system, if you know how to play the game right, you will thrive in a time like this. So to go back to the question, you ask, how do companies like the Lakers, how do these big giant corporations apply? Well, they read the qualifications. It says on the SBA website, any small business concern that meets SBA size standards, either the industry-based size standard or the alternative size standard, any business, 501c3, nonprofit organization, 501c19, veterans organization, tri um, tribal business concern, um with basically you have to have less than 500 employees, right? So you can only qualify for this loan if you have 500 employees or fewer. Now, how do companies get around this? Basically, what they do is they have subsidiaries, right? 
Apple is not just one company. Apple is not just Apple Inc. Apple has a bunch of LLCs under Apple. And some of those LLCs are basically under 500 employees. So guess what? If Apple as a company, right? Apple as that LLC, Apple LLC or Apple Chips LLC, Apple Marketing LLC. If that company, if Apple LLC decides to apply then Apple is very well qualified. So to answer your question, what's the loophole? You need to have your company set up as subsidiaries. Right? The Badu Enterprises is composed of 12 businesses, 25 entities. You know what that means? We can probably get about 20 PPP loans if you really want it. So that's the thing is that, you know, America is a game of systems. America is a country where you need to know how to work the system. So what these companies are doing now, whether it's right or wrong, I can't really comment on that. My comment, my point is they're taking advantage of what's available to them because they've read the rules. It's stated clearly, blatantly on the SBA website and have read the law. Their attorneys, they have legal attorneys, their tax returns are filed. Everything is clean cut straight to the point. The documents are good. They know Lendio. They know, they know all these lenders. So I would say, yes, they do qualify because they have subsidiaries that fall within the requirements. So my advice to anybody who's on this call is let's start taking advantage of this stuff because these programs are available to us if we qualify, of course. If our books and records are clean, we're using something like QuickBooks to keep track of our income and expenses. If our tax returns are being filed on time, not late, but on time, uh, we're, we're, not, we're not owing back taxes since 2012 or anything like that. We're actually being compliant because these companies are the ones that are being compliant. And so guess what? The government is saying, hey, you meet the requirements. Your documents are in order. Well, why not give you the money? You probably deserve it. So that's the way. And yeah, some of these companies, and I heard Harvard, for example, was supposed to be getting some funds. Um, but they decided to return it because of the media and how they portrayed it. So yeah, some companies are truly return the money. But I think to me, I take this as a lesson learned that I need to become like those companies where I have my stuff in order and I can set my companies up to the point where they can be micro, you know, they're, they're micro companies and they can be, they make me eligible for some of these programs that's out there. So to answer your question, that is how they are being able to take advantage of the system. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, it's running out quickly because those that know how to take advantage of the system are basically taking advantage of the system. And that and it's not even that they're not doing anything illegal either. That's the thing. They're doing things completely by the book, completely legal. It's just that they know how to get this money. Now, I do believe this is the side where the you know, the the good side of me comes out and says, "I do believe that some of this money is going to the wrong people. But like a like a wise man once told me, if you're the first line, if you're the first in line to eat, right, you will be the one that eats. So that's the key. And if if you if you got your stuff in order, then you will eat for sure. Yep, yep. And now let me uh we do have a few questions on the chat box. Let's see here. Uh, what's considered good credit for a person or a business applying for credit cards and loans? Um, six fifty and above. Um, you should have at least a six fifty. If you want the big stuff, if you want the real good stuff, you gotta have at least a seven hundred. And when I say good stuff, I mean the Chase Inc. cards. You gotta have at least a seven hundred. Did you have a question, Tamika? I'm sorry, what I'm sorry, what was that? Go 
Got it. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Alright, cool. Uh, let's see. It says, um, Chioma says, Jeff, can you restate the steps containing when to get account for an LLC? Yeah, basically, you get your articles of organization on your state's website. Then you get your tax ID number on the IRS website. Of course, you can utilize a professional for anything I'm saying today. And then you go ahead and present your articles and your tax ID number to the, um, to the bank, whether it's a JP Morgan, a small local bank like GN Bank, or your local credit union, whatever it is. Uh, Morgan said, I went to Champagne too, bleed orange and blue. Absolutely, all day Illini. All right, and then it says, Jeff, are you saying that you can, you can get several LLCs and get credit cards, pull the credit off for the down payment and use rental income to pay off the loan? Yes, 100%, all right? Some of the down payments that I get are from credit cards, are from loans, all right? These are completely legal things that the bank will allow you to do. You just have to make sure you're talking to the right bank. You're talking to a bank that understands the system, the game. Remember, America is the land of the brave and the home of the free, all right? You're free to do whatever you want as long as you're doing it within legal limits. Uh, I love America. I'm glad that my parents sent me here when I was eight years old. It is the best opportunity I've ever received in my life and I truly thank them for everything. Um, and I've learned firsthand, America is a game of systems, all right? We work under a systematic basis, meaning if you got your stuff in order, you know the system, you can beat the system. Not in a bad way or in a way where people chastise you or make you look bad, but in a way where it's like, hey, I did it right and I got the money. Stimulus checks. You might have heard that a lot of people are getting stimulus checks. Some people that are deceased. Well, if they filed their tax returns, then they deserve that stimulus check because they probably had a big funeral that they need to pay for. So it's not about whether or not somebody got the money. It's whether or not they were in line for the money. That they positioned themselves in the right way to get the money. So next time, right? We don't know when the next time COVID-19 will happen. Hopefully this thing will be dying down. But we know every 10 to 12 years, something happens. There was a recession that happened in 2008. The same similar thing happened. A lot of businesses were wiped out. People didn't have their books and records clean. And programs were coming and people couldn't qualify. Well, we said, well, we blamed it on, hey, they're probably not doing it because of our skin color or whatever it is. I think that we have to throw that away, and I don't even think it's an excuse, it's just the way that we're, we're tooled in a way, or the way that the brain has been, has been set, and that anytime we see something bad, we immediately play the card of, hey, they're not doing it because of our group, or before, because of you know any sort of race card that they call it. Um, sometimes, yeah, those things are inherently true, but at the same time, if you look at it, and if you're positioning yourself in the right way, utilizing professionals, you're doing things right by the book. You're, you're using QuickBooks. You're filing your tax returns. I know a lot of people who got approved for the PPP. A lot of people who got approved for PPP. I know a lot of people who have stimulus checks in their bank accounts right now. I know a lot of people who got unemployment in their bank accounts right now. Right? It's not about skin tone. It's not about you know economic status or anything like that. It's about knowing what's available, coming to these workshops, attending, taking your business to the next level. And it's about actually taking advantage. Remember, the first in line is the one who eats. If you're the last in line, you don't eat. That's the motto that I've learned ever since I was a kid. Yes, sir. Mm hmm mm hmm Yep, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Ex 
Exactly. 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 That's a good point. Definitely appreciate that, Lorenzo. Um, pretty much, yeah, what he just said is that if you were using one of these bank products such as Refundo or EPS Financial, uh, maybe you went to an H&R Block or even my firm where we do refund advances and things of that nature, your stimulus check will not come to your bank account because the IRS does not have that information on file. It comes to the bank product that you sent it through. So what happens is the bank products, of course, they weren't aware of this. It came to their attention. So what they're doing now is they'll mail you your check to your address that's on file usually. Um, so anybody who's filed through my firm and who's, um, you know, who did a bank product, you will be getting your check soon. Patience is key when it comes to this stuff. You will get your money, right? They do have it. Right? No, every, everybody who's, who's qualified is entitled to the 1200 um, it's just a matter of when you actually get it. So definitely appreciate that, um, Lorenzo. They do have an IRS portal. For those who did not do direct deposit, the IRS portal, I've heard, keywords, of, I've heard that the IRS system is working today. So you can go on the irs.gov website and basically punch in your um, direct deposit info and they should be able to honor it. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, question here is, is there a fee to get a DMV number? Absolutely not. They do have additional services that you can pay for, but the DMV number itself is free. Um, and then we have, how do you, how do we know what specific criteria we should have for our business? I actually pay for a DMV number. Just want to make sure we don't just pay out a lot of money. I mean, ultimately it's like, it, there's no, cri like business credit is always relying upon your personal credit. So overall, if you've got something in your business name, make sure it's being paid on time, right? Make sure the bill is being paid on time. And then also make sure that you, you at least review, go to nav.com and review your credit profile to see what's on there. You can pay for these services. And I don't think it hurts where you do a paid service once a year to get a more in-depth analysis of your report. Um, but you at least need to have awareness. And if you have something right out there, please pay it on time because they may be reporting to the credit bureaus. And then question is, is it worth the yearly fees if we're just starting out? Oh yeah. When it comes to money, you shouldn't be worried about fees. You should be worried about making more money. So your, con your main concern should be, can I make more money using the money that I receive? A yearly fee doesn't mean anything, you know? And in my business, I would have never advanced had I not paid for a coach and I, had I not paid for advertising or credit card processing fees, which we'll talk about in a second. So fee or not, it doesn't really matter to me. The key is I'm making money. I'm, I care more about income than I do expenses because if my income is up, then if my expenses are up as well, I'm just hoping that my expense don't go up past my income. And usually it's the case that if you spend money on something, it usually makes you more money than what you spend, hopefully. Right? And that's why I mentioned last time that I treat every key cost of key activity or expense as an investment as opposed to an expense. Um, and the question here is, what would be the pros and cons of using your personal credit to apply for a loan? I think I heard you say that is not advisable. Yeah, you. so in order to get a business loan or business credit card, you must apply through your personal credit. Like as far as like a, getting a hard inquiry and backing it, but it actually gets reported to the business as opposed to your personal, unless you have Capital One or um, credit card. Um, now, if you need like a personal loan or personal credit card to get started and you can't qualify for business, then hey, we all got to start somewhere. That's what I do with my car rental business. I mean, truly, I didn't know. I didn't come to a workshop like this where I learned about business credit, which is why it's good to know these things before you get big into your business as opposed to after because then you can make mistakes that I made. Now, mind you, we were very successful and everything like that, but we could have easily avoided mistakes had we paid attention or attended seminars like this where you might even have to pay for it, um, but it's, it's a cost of doing business ultimately. So the best is to get business credit. It gets reported on your business credit profile, but you will need your personal credit to actually get the credit or get approved for the credit. Uh, question here is getting your LLC. Yep, go ahead.
-hmm. Yeah, so it won't... Yeah, it won't affect your personal credit in general, even when you're starting. So if you have a Chase Inc. card, it does not affect your personal credit. Except for the inquiry that lands on your personal credit. Remember, with the Chase Inc. card, you can get it on day one of starting the business. Um, every loan that you apply for, they will ask you for personal information, no matter what. It could be real estate. It can be credit card. It could be a term loan. They will request what is the owner's information. And they do, sometimes they do a soft pull where they softly pull your credit report or they do a hard pull. But the key is they will report to the business, right? If, if you get approved and you're making your payments, none of it touches your personal credit report. It's just the initial inquiry that may land on your personal credit report. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. So we still start off with business credit, but in order to get approved, we need to get an inquiry on our personal credit. Um, then the question here is getting your LOC, are these online places legit such as Swift filings? Should you file with the state of Illinois? Can you direct me with which directions to file for my LOC? Um, so remember, full disclosure, we run a company called Badu Entity Formation LLC. We are truly believers that you should be utilizing professionals when you're doing stuff. Yes. You could go on a Secretary of State site, get your LLC. Now, what if you were to get a corporation and you thought you were an S-corporation, but you forgot to file the necessary S-corp paperwork that comes after you get your LLC or S-corp or a corporation? What happens then? I literally had a client who thought he had an S-corp. Turns out he never filled out the paperwork for the S-corp because he went on one of these sites. He went on the Secretary of State site or he went off SWIP filings or legal Zoom. Next thing you know, he's not an S-Corp. He's actually a C-Corporation. So yeah, you could use these sites very well, but there's a lot more behind it than what you see. Oh yeah, I'll just pay $150, I'll get my LLC and that's it. No. It goes a little deeper than that. Um, there's actually some more things that you have to incorporate. Now, can you be successful and get away with it? Yes, you can. But my advice is please use a professional. Either my firm, you can use an attorney or law firm. Um, it's definitely beneficial. Yes, we, we, we own a company called Badu Entity Formation, LLC, which helps forms LLCs, INCs, and all types of companies in the state of Illinois and all other states in the U.S. We operate in all 50 states in the U.S. right now. And the website for that is baduentityformation.com. Or you can also shoot me an email, let me know what you need, and I'll take care of you. Um, yeah, no problem. And then, absolutely. Yeah, so it's it's a great question. I appreciate you for asking that, Shiona. Um, my advice, anytime you're using a professional, is one, let the professional do what the prof professional got to do to get you your service. But at the same time, you do need to monitor that professional, make sure they are actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, this happens a lot, no offense, with real estate contractors that I've personally encountered, where you give the job to the contractor, next thing you know, the job doesn't get done, right? Or I've had the same issues with um, even an attorney that I worked with in the past, where something was supposed to be done, turns out it wasn't done. So in our firm, I can speak for our firm, our body entity formation LLC, we give you full visibility of the process. We'll ask you for what you need, and we'll get you articles of organization. We send you the articles, you have a physical copy of it or I'm sorry, electronic copy. We send you, we apply for the tax ID number, we send it to you, um, and then we give you some best practices or next steps. The challenge or mistake that I've seen is some people might not even look at the paperwork. You know, they, they don't even look at it. 
Next thing you know, they're formed as a corporation as opposed to an LLC. Um, God forbid, right? But I've seen it happen where people don't even look at the paperwork that's sent to them. Their tax ID number gets lost. They didn't even know that it was sent to them. All right? When you get your tax ID number, please take note of it because you cannot retrieve it unless you call the IRS. And it's a very long process to getting it again for those who've ever gone through it. Um, so in our firm, we send you everything that we file and everything is very, very visible and it's very transparent. Does that answer your question, Sheila? Yeah, no problem. All right, and then quick question here. It says, you said that if I'm an independent contractor and self-employed, I need to have filed only a profit, not a loss to apply. Someone is not muted. Um, yes, so in order to qualify for the PPP loan, Paycheck Protection Program, you must have a Schedule C that shows a profit meaning income minus expenses. Remember last time we talked about what a profit and loss is and all that good stuff. Income minus expenses must equal a profit to qualify for the PPP program. Um, so you cannot show a net loss or you'd be disqualified from the program. And then can you recommend a bank to use? I use Chase for all my accounts, but I also know other banks like GN Bank, which is the only black owned bank in the city of Chicago. Um, and it's CEO by, or basically one of the um, owners is um, Pop, Dr. Pakwasi Indum, who's one of my mentors. Um, I mean, so for me, I use Chase, but if you want a small local bank, um, GN Bank is located on the south side, I believe. It's, I think it's 47th and King Drive. They have a branch right there on the corner um, where you can, it used to be called Illinois Services Federal Bank, but they changed their name to Coke to be properly branded with all their other banks. They're one of the largest banks in Ghana right now, actually. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I was able to answer questions. Um, anything else before we move to the other side of this presentation, which is talking about um, the different um, softwares and apps and things of that nature? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They do open business accounts. Um, GN Bank does open business accounts. It's called GN Bank. G as in girl, N as in Nancy, GN Bank. Yes, sir. It's on, yeah, it's on 47th and King Drive. It's a Chicago local bank, but they also have branches in Ghana. They're one of the largest banks in Ghana, but they have a U.S. bank in the um, city of Chicago. Yes, sir. Yep. And if you need somebody that works there, I know I know some people. Person, I mean, you can always go there and you know get an account and all that. But if you ever having trouble getting in touch with them, we do work closely with them. I am the treasurer of the Ghana National Council. Um, so we do have very, very close ties with the bank, actually close to the CEO himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you can, so the question was, can you get a business line of credit through one of these banks, um, such as a GN bank? And yes, if you go to the branch, talk to your relationship manager, they will. They can set you up with a line of credit. You usually do have to have an account with them. Um, and your business usually has to be active for at least two years in order to get the line of credit because you need to have history. Um, but to start off, you can get a business credit card with one of these companies though. Um, they don't do, they typically don't do startups. Startups don't qualify for lines of credits usually. But you do qualify for a credit card though, which is basically a line of credit. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, no problem. 
All right, cool. And yeah, we'll, we'll have another Q&A at the end, but let's get into the accounting software. It's right about 7.28. We won't go past 7. I'm sorry, we won't go past 8 o'clock tonight, I promise you. Um, but Wave is one of, so one of the accounting softwares to keep track of your money is called Wave. Wave allows you to create invoices, process payments, and also run payroll. The pros of it, it's free. It's a free software. It's easy to connect your bank accounts, and it has a professional look and feel. The cons of it, it's not as fully integrated as a software like QuickBooks. Uh, so it has very limited features, but it is free. You know, so if you need something just to get you going, it could be something to look into. Second one is FreshBooks. Um, I'm sorry, FreshBooks. FreshBooks allows you to invoice, track expenses, track time, accept credit card payments, create financial reports, including profit and loss statements. Um, the pros are it's a very good comprehensive package for what they offer. It does have a professional look and feel. The cons, um, it can get a little pricey. It's actually more expensive than QuickBooks, depending on the package you get. Price range is anywhere from $15 to 50 bucks or so, and that's adjusted for inflation every year, which is actually more expensive than QuickBooks. Um, and it's not as fully integrated as QuickBooks. You know, it's like getting something at a lower, at a higher price, but not as good quality. It usually doesn't make sense. Um, but you can look into FreshBooks. Now, QuickBooks. Remember, full disclosure, when I started off this call, I said, I'm on the board or council of QuickBooks. I will be stepping off the council next year, but I do make decisions as to what goes into this QuickBooks software. Full disclosure. Uh, we go to a conference every um, twice a year in California. This year, due to the COVID, we're actually gonna be doing virtual. Um, but QuickBooks allows you to automatically download and categorize transactions participate in online billing, create professional looking invoices and estimates, upload receipts through the phone, create customized financial reports, and unlike any other software, it allows you to track inventory. The pros of it, it's a full-blown accounting software, meaning that it does everything you need an accounting software to do. It has a professional look and feel. It's the best software, hands down, rated number one in the industry for countless years um, for small business owners. It's very competitive prices, anywhere from $7 to about 65 or so per month. And if you guys are interested in a discount, if you want the plus version, my discount only is for the plus version, meaning the full blown version. Um, I'm a certified QuickBooks Pro advisor, so I do offer discounts and things of that nature. But if you want the self-employed, it's only about seven bucks or so. Um, so plenty of discounts being offered. You know, and my rate for, if you guys want to take a note of this, my rate for plus is $25 a month. So for $25 a month, I can get you the full blown version of QuickBooks. Um, it's, tip, it's retailed at $65. So that's almost, I mean, that's a, a big savings right there. Saves business owners a ton of time, tons and tons of time, about 10 hours or so per month. If you're a, um, an attorney making $500 an hour, that's $5,000 a month. $60,000 a year of money, cash, that you're saving in your pocket because of the time you're not using to waste on these other softwares. The cons is it does require some training if you want to get the look and feel. We do offer QuickBooks training as a service. Um, so we do a QuickBooks training. But while we're here, we're just going to do a quick 5 to 10 minute demonstration on QuickBooks. So I'm actually going to walk you guys through... Um, the, the sample or basically how QuickBooks looks and feels. So to do that, we just go to our QuickBooks sample company. This is what we use for all of our trainings. Um, so we just go to QuickBooks online sample company. So I'm just gonna walk you guys through a few of the tabs just to give you guys um, you know, just a quick overview. I know at the Urban League, we have historically done a few of these. Let me make sure I'm on the right stuff. Yeah, I think it's loading a little slow here we go so QuickBooks Online Plus sample company um, yeah anybody has access to this by the way not just me so yeah you just click the thing to verify you're not a robot and basically it takes you to this is what QuickBooks actually looks like this is what the plus version the full-blown version looks like when you come in there it shows you um, it shows you your, your company snapshot so it gives you a quick you can put your logo and all that good stuff on here it tells you what invoices are overdue or outstanding. Um, all of our clients get invoiced through QuickBooks. It tells you what's paid. 
It shows you expenses from a 30 day standpoint, this month, this quarter, this year. You can really play around with it real nice. And then you can link as many bank accounts as you want. So QuickBooks, you auto, it, it's an auto populated software. Meaning all you have to do is link a business bank account um, or any account that you want, credit card, and then it auto populates everything for you. So this is just a snapshot of everything. And then if you go into the banking tab, this is where you spend most of your time. Banking tab basically shows you the bank that you have connected. So one of the first things you want to do with QuickBooks is you want to add an account and you basically, um, you would add the account. So it, whether you, you bank with a Chase, even GN Bank, GN Bank is actually on here as well. Um, but this one, they call it Illinois Services Federal. Yeah, they haven't changed their name with QuickBooks yet for some reason. Yep, there you go. So yeah, this is it. So this is actually, it's GM Bank. So let me let me just show you guys what GM Bank. There you go. This is what GM Bank's website actually looks like. Um, remember, it's one of the largest banks in Ghana right now. Um, but it is integrated with QuickBooks. So it is one of the nice things. GM Bank is actually integrated fully with QuickBooks. Um, of course, yeah, they give you like updates and all that good stuff. So yeah, for those that don't know GM Bank, this is how the website looks. It's the only black owned bank in the city of Chicago right now. Um, and it's owned by my mentor, one of my mentors, whose name is Pakwa Siyundu, one of the wealthiest man to ever scratch the surface of this planet. Um, but yeah, basically one of the first things you do is you, you, um, you link your bank account, whether it's a Chase bank, and then it auto populates the moment you link. And yeah, it will give you tips and tricks and all that good stuff. The moment you link it, it auto populates your transactions for you. And so your job is to go in there and just categorize. So let's say books by Bessie is income. So you can say design income. This company is a design company. You just click add. Anytime it sees that Bessie company for income, it will try to categorize that transaction for you or it will green it out. So QuickBooks won't do anything. It will not add anything to your QuickBooks, but it will essentially um, it will like give you guidance as to what might be an expense. So let me give you guys an example. This A rental, let's say it's supplies, right? So the moment I click supplies, guess what? Now it greens it out. It says, okay, well, all A rentals might just be supplies. So we just hit add. And then we can create a rule, which means anytime I see A rental, please call it supplies. Um, so yeah, quick, easy, simple. You know, your goal is to get down to zero transactions. Try to get these two numbers to equal the bank balance and the QuickBooks balance. If not, it's not the end of the world. It just means that something might be either off or you might have added QuickBooks at a later time. Um, or I'm sorry, at an earlier time. And it also tells you how far back it populated your transactions. If you need more data, you just need to go on your bank site, download the activity, and then import it, whether it's a QBO, QuickBooks Online file, or whether it's a CSV, an Excel um, file. So the banking tab, that's where you'll spend 90% of your time. Other tabs, you can send invoices to people on QuickBooks using the sales tab. This is how we send invoices to all of our clients. Um, and then also reports, you know, you, you'll use a profit and loss report. So remember when I was telling you guys, if you don't have a business, if you don't keep track of your numbers, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. Well, here's how you can prevent that hobby. You go to reports, go to profit and loss, and then boom, it gives you a nice, neat profit and loss that has everything you know, done for you. You can print it as, um, you can view it as PDF or as an Excel spreadsheet, you know, so it's, it's a really, really nice looking feel. You can filter for different dates. Um, let me show you a few cool reports. We have the management reports, which basically, if you're looking to, um, if you're just looking to present this to investors or something, look at this. You click one button, it says management report at the top for your company for the period ended so and so. Very professional, very professional. Table of contents even, um, profit and loss, balance sheet, those are the two statements you typically need. Very, very professional. You can easily send this, you can email this to somebody. Um, another report that I really like are the, the business overview, business snapshot one, and it's beautiful. If you're into graphs and charts, this is the one for you. It's a snapshot of your business. You know, um, how's your income looking from a graphical standpoint? 
or your profit and loss, how your expenses is looking, how have you done compared to previous years. So you can see this is, I mean, this is what the big companies use. They're using the big stuff like this, analytical tools. Um, this is where we do ratio analysis and things of that nature. Maybe we compare this to our industry. Um, so this is, this is good stuff right here. Uh, I love QuickBooks. It can do anything that I really want QuickBooks to do. Um, you know, so I, I love it and I highly recommend you guys seriously consider these other platforms that I just shared. They don't have nearly as many features as what QuickBooks can do. Um, so let me just um, take a few questions. We'll start with the chat box one since those were asked first and then we'll go into other questions. Um, yeah, so these slides will be sent, to, like these slides are available and this is also recorded for those that didn't catch it. Um, so yeah, this, this is a little, it, it does move a little fast, but this is actually recorded. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and if you do have a question about something, or if you need me to repeat something, just let me know and I'll repeat it. And then question, let's see, I was going to say something. How long will you, we have that discount available to us? It doesn't last long, so the sooner the better. Um, that's all I'll say with that because QuickBooks can say, hey, we'll take away your discount at any point. Once you're in, you're in though. You're in for good, basically. Um, and then what website can I use to develop my business plan? I'm sure the Urban League can provide you resources specifically. Um, I know there's templates out there. You can go on Google and look up business plan templates if you need somewhere to start. But I, I know the Urban League has something that you guys can use. Um, and yes, QuickBooks is needed for all stages of business. Startup. The best time to start using this stuff is actually when you're starting. It's not when you become big and when you become busy. It's actually when you start, right? So there's never too early. It's never too early to have an LLC. It's never too early to get a business bank account. It's never too early to have QuickBooks. Um, this stuff needs to be going because then you get into the habit. Habits are very important in life, especially as a business owner. Um, and, and yes, to answer the question, I don't recommend anything other than QuickBooks. Not just because I'm tied to QuickBooks, but it is truly, we vetted QuickBooks heavily and it is truly the best accounting software that's out there right now. Um, any other questions on, on this side thing, you just email me. I only offer a discount for the plus version, meaning the full blown version. It's $25 a month, all right? It's retail for 65. If you're signing up for any other version, then there's no discount on my end. QuickBooks does offer discounts. If you go to quickbooks.com right now, we'll actually go there right now. Um, if you go to quickbooks.com, so let's see here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can just go, here, here we go, 70% off QuickBooks for three months. This is quickbooks.com right now. Um, you can go to buy now and save, and it basically shows you the pricing. So self-employed went up by a dollar, it's $8 a month now. Essential is 12, plus went up to $70 instead of 65. Um, but it's $21 for about, um, for three months, basically. And you get free trial for 30 days, too. So if anything, take advantage of the free trial. But remember, if you're trying to go through my firm for the discount, it's only the plus version at $25 per month. Um, got it, got it. Any other questions before we move to the last slide of the day, which is about methods to getting paid? Yeah, you do risk the discount going away. It um Yeah, so you can you can upgrade. Well, I take the back, I'm sorry. The moment you sign up for QuickBooks, you no longer become eligible for my discount. Yeah, they made that one very clear to me. <laughs> they used to be able to do that, but they actually changed it about a year ago, so I'll be careful with that. And even, I think they have one now, if you're a freelancer, they're doing a special where it's a dollar a month for 12 months. So, I mean, there you go. A <laughs> dollar a month for 12 months. I mean, I talk about the cost of doing business being so cheap.
No, I would, especially if they're offering, yeah, especially if they're offering you a free 30 day trial and a dollar per month for QuickBooks. I would start using getting used to QuickBooks because this is the stuff you'll have to get used to anyway once you get big and all of that. So I would much rather put myself ahead of the curve as opposed to behind the curve. Exactly. Especially when they're, I mean, I've never seen a price this low, by the way. This is actually shocking a dollar a month for QuickBooks for 12 months. Um, yeah, it's probably because of COVID, I can imagine. So there you go. You guys are seeing it firsthand. This is recorded. It's a screenshot. I mean, you're looking live on the screen. QuickBooks is saying $1 a month for QuickBooks self-employed. It doesn't get any cheaper than that. I guarantee you that. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you can go on QuickBooks.com. They give you all the rundown. I would say for somebody starting out, you, all you need is self-employed. You know, self-employed. It gives you all these features. You should be good. Um, and if you want something a little bit more advanced, hey, maybe get the simple start. You know, so it gives you advanced you won't need. Advanced is for companies like Microsoft and all these big, giant companies. Um, plus is for like a, a decent-sized company, so a medium, a small to medium-sized company that is growing and they're growing at a fast pace. They're looking to send 1099s and all that good stuff. So it tells you exactly what features come with what um, type of deal. Yes, you can upgrade on your own. Um, now, here's another thing I should, I should point this out. If you're looking to go from self-employed to one of these, they don't allow you to do so. You would have to buy this one separately, completely brand new. But if you're going from simple start to essentials to plus to advanced, you can do that where all your data will convert for you. Um, so if you're starting off with self-employed, then you kind of have to stick with self-employed unless you're, you're just revamping the whole company type of deal or you're just starting fresh in the new year. So your data will not carry over if you're canceling your self-employed and trying to go to the simple start. But you can go from simple start and all your data converts to essentials plus advance, all that good stuff. Except for this one, except for the one here specifically, a dollar per month for 12 months. Um, yes. Yeah, so basically 12 a month for three months for essentials. But self-employed is a dollar a month for 12 months. Exactly. Exactly. 25 a month. So you get, literally, you get the full-blown at, at a price of $25 a month. Yeah, pretty much just email me saying, hey, I'm looking to move forward with QuickBooks. I would need your company's name, email address, and a phone number. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yeah, there you guys go. And that, yeah, I mean, these prices are good for three months. I mean, everybody, you guys know marketing, right? This is how they hook you on. They get you some, a special for three months. And then for the rest of time, they increase the price. With my discount, it's $25 a month. And in a way, it's not, it's not a lifetime 25 a month, but it's, all, it's guaranteed for at least a year where you get the $25 a month price. And I can always vouch for QuickBooks to make sure you stay at the 25. Um, so nothing really to worry about there. Um, oh yeah, and then if, if you have multiple companies, please email me because after the first company, I can get you in for $5 a month on a plus version. So that's, and that one is life. That one is lifetime. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that one. All right, so, yeah, we got a, a question here. Somebody said, on Credit Karma, I'm at a 698, but when I go to Lender and Citibank, they put me at a 714 to a 724. Should I increase my credit limit to boost my score before I apply? 
for a business credit card to get a business deal or the two point yeah the two points don't matter in my opinion um and that's why i'm saying your credit score doesn't mean anything it's your credit report the contents of the credit report that means a lot if you want your most accurate report then go to experian.com essentially um so that's that's something to keep in mind uh, for the person who asked that question um let me just make sure. One second. Yeah, so overall, it's like if you have the credit, like if you have a decent credit score now, then please go ahead and, add, you know, just then go ahead and, and apply for the, the credit card. Um, just because Credit Karma is, will tell you a credit score, but if your credit report is showing that you should be at a 700, then that's usually the most important factor, essentially. Sounds good. Cool. Any any other questions before we move to the last slide? How to collect your money? Um, yeah, probably, I would say probably wait to the end or also too. you know, you guys are always more than welcome to ask me a question via email. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if it's something that you think would be best in a more in-depth conversation, then yeah, let's, let's probably catch up via email because yeah, this is more, these are more like general questions, more basic type of questions, the more specific we usually have to have have to get into a more in-depth conversation about that. All right, so let's talk about, yeah, how do you get paid? So this is the last slide. We'll spend about four minutes and then we'll do a five minute Q&A and then we'll wrap up. I know we have we had a lot of questions today, but um, utilize the apps. Wave, FreshBooks, QuickBooks, Square, PayPal. Uh, we even take Bitcoin in our firm. Never run a cash only business. So that's one thing I would recommend. Please do not run a cash only business. You will not qualify for things like PPP, EIDL, SBA loans. Um, and also we all know most people nowadays prefer to pay with card. Over 95% of people prefer to pay with the card. So if you're running a cash only business, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. And I know some of us might want to go under the radar and all this and not want to pay taxes and I mean, but please try to do things by the book, right? Take advantage where you can, but to run a cash only business in 2020 is not the smartest thing on the planet to do. I used to go to a taco joint, best, one of the best tacos in the world. But every time you went there, they said cash only and it threw a lot of people off. They finally stopped getting so stuck in their ways and they got a credit card machine and their business went up tremendously. I know a Harold's Chicken that did the same thing. And now the business is going up tremendously because they're taking online orders. I mean, in a COVID-19 environment anyway, when people are scared to even see somebody, like why would you want to run a cash only business? It's, it's very detrimental to your business. You will go out of business eventually if you continue running a cash only business. Um, most people don't like to hold physical cash. Warren Buffett, one of my mentors, does not hold more than $400 on him at a given time. And any, he's the third wealthiest man on the planet. And he does not hold more than $400 on him at a given time. Right? That's how invaluable cash has become. And that everybody likes plastic. They like card. They like, you know, um, electronic payments. All for various payment methods. Cash, check, ACH, credit cards, Bitcoin. I always, 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 and walk around with your chip reader too. Everywhere you go, come with your chip reader. You never know when you'll meet that person at the club that's ready to pay you, right? You see them with bottle service, maybe it's the time to pull out that um, that chip reader because they owe you. Um, so we truly need to make sure that we're getting paid however way that we need to be getting paid. Understand it's the cost of doing business, 3% fee, 2% fee, so what? All right, you're getting more revenue uh, what, basically, our business has seen a spike when we started. Uh, we've always accepted credit cards, 
But when we made it more prevalent that we're accepting credit cards, we got paid more. So you get more money when you offer these payment methods. Send invoices and reminders, so use QuickBooks. We send reminders every Friday because Friday is payday. Um, so we usually get paid, most of our money comes in on Fridays. And ironically, that's when we send most of our money to, to our people. And then always evaluate your accounts receivable, excuse me, or AR policy. So accounts receivable is basically giving um, things to people on credit. Um, if your accounts receivable collection policy is 100%, you don't have a good enough policy. It means that you're too strict. You got to loosen up your terms a little bit. If your accounts receivable policy is less than 80%, it means you have a bad policy, meaning you're not collecting on 20% of your payments. So you have to find that balance. I would say about 85 to 90% is a very good AR collection rate. Um, so that means that you're being flexible, but you're also not being too lenient. All right, if somebody owes us money, we're gonna chase them down for that money. We're sending them reminders every Friday. We're sending them letters. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so for those who are, if if you're not talking or if you're not contributing, please, we do ask that you mute your mic um, because it can be distracting. Um, but basically what I did, and good thing is this will be recorded so you guys will get a chance to go back in, review it and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, always evaluate your accounts receivable policy. Meaning don't be too strict, but also don't be too lenient. Find the right balance. Offer 30-day terms. Offer things on credit. This is how companies like Macy's and all this, that's how they're getting ahead because they're offering these things on credit. But yeah, with that being said, it is 7.56. We'll do about a five-minute Q&A and then we'll wrap it up for the day. So thank you guys. Um, I, so J to my knowledge, James will send it to you guys. I believe that you guys have like a drive somewhere. Yep. Yeah. So reach out to James about that. Um, and he'll certainly be able to send that to you for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we got some comments here. We appreciate the information. Absolutely. All right. That is my CPA. Absolutely. Definitely appreciate it, Martin. Um, so, yeah, I mean, now let's, um, yeah, what, I know, I know we had a lot of questions, a lot of questions today, but please feel free to ask any questions you have at this time. You can either post in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. This is the time to, um, to be vocal. If you don't want to ask your question now, please let's catch up via email. Set up a consultation on the BaduTaxServices.com website. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're always available to help you and all that good stuff. But, and this will be my last class too, by the way, of this, this session. Um, so I usually teach every single session for, you know, for the finance component. But this will be my last class. So if you guys need anything, please let me know. It was a pleasure working with you guys. Hopefully you guys learn a lot. Hopefully you guys will take this advice. You took notes, you're watching the recordings, you're using these platforms, you're asking for consultations and everything. And Tamika said, you are the best, but you definitely appreciate it. All right, so um, yeah, just um, just let me know. I mean, what, what questions do you guys have? We got about two minutes. We'll do two more minutes for Q&A. Um, Cause I know you guys did ask a lot of questions, and it is almost eight o'clock. Absolutely, definitely appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You know, patience is one of the the skills that I learned in life that it's very important. I used to be a very impatient person, very, very impatient. But I learned that to, to grow and to progress in life, 
You have to exercise patience. Any other questions? We'll, we'll just leave about, we got one minute. So we'll do last call for questions and then we'll end the Zoom. We'll end the live streams and everything. Yeah, if you, if you guys need the recording, just reach out to James. He'll be able to send you, um, I did send it to him. So he'll be able to send it to you guys. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure to teach you guys. This is one of my favorite things to do is to teach this class. Um, love it to death. I'm glad we were able to adapt into this new environment. This new normal, they call it the virtual world. Uh, I've been used to it since 20, what, 20, 20, um, 16. Um, my firm has always been virtual, you know. So, yeah, it doesn't sound like we have any questions. Remember, if you guys need me, please feel free to reach out. Don't hesitate. Um, if you need my contact info, I'm sure James will be able to send it. It's also, I'm sure you guys have probably received or you guys have emailed me or, or communicated somehow. Um, but it's been a pleasure teaching you guys. Hope you guys um, enjoy it. Let me go ahead and stop the recording. And so thank you guys for being a part of this webinar. You guys have a great night. Let me know if you need anything. Please stay safe and stay home. Thank you guys.